you know, I believe you were a part of a group digging in the crates. That's right. DITC, you know, uh, Showbiz AG, Diamond D discovered me, um, Lloyd Finesse. Then we brought on OC, Big Al, Buck Wow. You know, at the time, DITC was running the streets on the underground level. Lord Finesse was probably one of the, not probably, he was the nicest um, young rapper in the game. He discovered Big Al. You know, Diamond D put out a classic album. But we all from the same hood, most of us. And so Diamond D told me, yo, man, stop being in the streets. Talk me into going to the studio with him. And I went up in there and he said, yo, just tell your life story on the music. And so we immediately came up with like Flojo. You know, second, third time we went to the studio. Flojo uh, went number one in the country rap singles. So, you know, we came out the gate swinging, you know? Yeah, okay. and on my first album, I had a lot of support. I had uh, Brent, um, Grand Poobah was on there. Kooji Rap was on there. I mean, these guys was the gods at the time. Kooji Rap, Grand Poobah was on there. Uh, of course, the whole DITC. Apache, rest in peace. He was like, he had that record out of Gangsta Bitch. It was like the number one song. It was like a lean back at the time. And so everybody came and supported me on my first project. And um, it's an honor looking back to, to see you know, somebody like me, a first-time artist getting embraced like that. Yeah. yeah. What year was this? 9-3. 93, okay. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned Big L. So mm -hmm. he was part of your group, too. That's right. Man, back then, that's that's crazy because, you know, he turned into this, you know, underground mm -hmm. legend. And you guys were already, you know, linked up way back then. Yeah, he's a member of the group. He was the youngest member. He was funny, he was a knucklehead. He was a little brother, man. He was just a beautiful guy, man. And lyrically, he was a he was a genius. So, you know, he got stopped ahead of his time, you know? And then years later, you see people appreciating him more than when he was even alive, you know? Cause people go back to the music. You know, that's what this is all about. This is documenting time. This is documenting the stories, the real stories in time where people could come back in 20, 30 years and look at these interviews and just be like, oh, shit, that's how it went, you know? Okay, so you're in this group and, you know what I'm saying, you're making moves and you're doing a lot of things. At what point do you meet Big Pun? Well, I was on my second album. I was finishing my second album. And... uh in New York, we go to these spots called the Bodega. And so it was right in my projects where I grew up. Um, so I pull up, you know, I'm in the LS400, I'm in the white Lexus, the big body shit. And I go in the store, I go get me a Diet Pepsi. And when I come out, there's a couple of Latino brothers freestyling. And then one of them happened to be this big guy. He said, let me go, let me go. And then he starts rapping. And uh, just blew my mind, bro. He just blew my mind. I knew, I've been so much of a hip hop historian, a fan of hip hop, that I knew he was the best in the game when I heard him. I was like, oh, he's the greatest, right? He's the best lyricist right now, you know? And uh, it's all about, uh, lyrics alone don't make you a superstar. So you, it's all about picking beats, picking the right producers, making the right hooks, the right looks, the right features. So it's a lot of shit going on that ain't just, you know, cause you, you ever wondered when you loved the guy that was so lyrical, that he was so great, you was like, why he ain't blow up like that? Cause you ain't, he ain't have that Irv Gotti behind him. He didn't have that Diddy, that Dr. Dre behind him. You know, Dr. Dre will take a motherfucker that Probably Eminem probably would have came with us and been an I. Dr. Dre molded him into the biggest shit in the universe. And so, you know, uh, you know, and that was that that was the uh dynamic between Fat Joe and Big Pun. You know what I'm saying? That was the the thing that made it so successful. Meeting Big Pun, man, you know, 
you guys did a lot, man. How hard was that journey from the point where you guys, you know, meet to start? I don't know? think it was hard at all. You know, the day I met him, I took him to my studio. He jumped on two songs on my second album. My second album was closing up. And then as soon as I met him, you know, I was there with what Puffy did with, with Biggie. So I was there for the whole thing. Like I watched Biggie in a tank top like you. They can't see you right now, but in a tank top like you. And the next day he had a fur coat on with gators and, and a fedora. Like, I mean, next day. Like hanging out with him like this, next day gators, fur. You know, I was like, oh shit, you could do that? So I seen all that. And so I knew when I met Pun, you know, cause if we would have let just Pun go, He'd have been like trigger happy, just spitting crazy, but he wouldn't have thought about the hits for the ladies and stuff like that. So I was like, no, bro, you're gonna be the Latino biggie. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna go that way. And so, you know, we made sure he had all the Versace shit on. He had that look, that aura, that persona. Um, and so, you know. Yeah, the went from the beginning. From the beginning, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And at, w at one point, you guys are at a club, and you guys are having trouble getting in, and and Mike Tyson's oh. there. Yo, bro, that's crazy. Um, that's God for real. Um, we was trying to go in the tunnel, tunnel most dangerous club in New York City history. Not even just the most dangerous in the history. Like the bouncers was like seven feet tall, cock diesel, six pack. Like they beat the shit out of you, and they jump off the. They they, you know they was like ninja turtles, like they, you know, and so only the tough guys went to the tunnel, right? You know, like and then you usually go, a hundred deep, fifty deep, like it's not where you going to chill, right? But they had fun flex. It was the uh. Big Cap, the best DJs in New York was playing there. In fact, that was the last place I was there the night Easy e and Ice Cube talked for the first time in years, just before Easy e died. I happened to be in the tunnel, and I happened to be right there when they was talking and all that, and see them in there. And so we getting it. We, we, we had a show in Jersey. That closes early. We go to the tunnel. Um, the tunnel... You know, Big Pun is double platinum, on fire, uh, the biggest thing on earth. And we're hearing his song, but they won't let us in because they want him to take off his Timberland boots because people used to put guns and knives inside the boots. That's the reason why. But uh, Pun was such a big guy, it was really hard for him to come take these boots off right there in that hallway. So he started arguing with them. You know, you know, Pun ain't scared of shit. So he's arguing, it was like eight of them. So he's arguing with one. And the seven guys are calming down the one guy. Next thing you know, it's six guys calming down two guys. Then there's five guys calming down. Before you know it, it's five guys saying, Fat Joe and Big Pun. And, you know, it's just like, so I'm, I stop Pun because I'm always been realistic. So I'm like, yo, Pun, you do know we're going to get up here. He's like, yo, I got the straps in the car. There's no way we was getting to the car. This guy's a seven foot tall cock diesel. I'm like, yo, bro, we going down. And then, but Punk kept going and you know, that's my brother. So we kept cursing him out. They keep going back. And out of nowhere, we hear this little voice say, yo, Pun, yo, Joe, fuck these mother And we turn around, it's I am Mike Tyson. 2.30 in the morning, fresh out of jail. He had the kufi on, this, so he had some Gucci loafers. He started taking them off to fight. So he ready to fuck them up. At that time, I ain't Mike Tyson. He's probably the most feared man uh, without a weapon in the world. And so he wound up chasing the first security guard who st started everything around the car. And the guy looks at me, he's like, yo, Joe, yo, punk, tell him to stop, tell him to stop. You know, because Iron Mike was going to f*** him up. But that was God's doing, man. That was a blessing. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.